We're here this morning at the Klamath Bird Observatory's Bird Monitoring Station uh, based at the Jefferson Nature Center. This is one of our mist nets. You can see that it's a very fine mesh of a net and it's uh, constructed to have a small pocket to uh, hold the bird when the bird flies into the net when it feels uh, any restriction of the uh, netting on its wings, uh, they tend to just stop beating their wings and they fall into these loose pockets uh, where they get mildly tangled until we come around every 25, 35 minutes or so and we carefully extract the birds out of them. We've captured a black-capped chickadee. Typically we uh, slip the netting off of one of the wings that's got tangled. That bit of the netting is usually around the head and then after you get what was around the head off, that goes right to what's around the other wing. And then that slips right off. And the last step is often what they're grabbing with their foot. You just gently sort of, sort of like massaging the toes, trying to slip it off there. And there. And this one's already banded which is uh, this time of year kind of typical for a year-round species. We've probably had a chance, an opportunity to capture about all the chickadees in this immediate area, so they all have bands on them right now, or nearly all of them. All right. what we've got here. When you have more than just a few birds, you sometimes forget what's inside, so it's like a little surprise when you stick your hand in to pull it out. Ah, this bird is a fox sparrow. It's a winter resident here, but does not nest in the Rogue Valley here, so these just started arriving about a month ago, and uh, they'll be here throughout the winter. And this one already has a band, which is kind of fun because, especially since the band looks kind of old, I suspect that it was probably banded in some year previous to 2009. So I need to be very careful of recording the band number. 8 Now the first step I, I want to take is to look at uh, the bird's skull through the top of the cranium. Uh, what I'll do, it's, this technique is called sculling, uh, and it involves uh, using a couple drops of water uh, to part the feathers on the top of the head, and then looking through the skin, at the, uh, looking for the extent of bone tissue growth in the head. Uh, young birds that were hatched in 2009, this year, which we would call a hatching year bird, uh, will have a less than completely ossified skull. Uh, adults, birds hatched in some year previous to 2009 uh, on this date would have a completely ossified skull. And what I mean by completely ossified or incompletely ossified is that uh, these uh, small songbirds uh, are hatched, when they hatch out of the egg, that they have one layer of bone in their skull, during the first six months of their life, a second layer grows, and we can see the uh, progression of the growth of that second layer. There, it looks a little more whitish compared to a pinkish uh, tissue color when we look through the very thin skin. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And you can see that the bird's pretty calm. I'm holding it in... Uh, a manner to where it can't really struggle, but I'm not applying pressure anywhere on the bird's body. It's a very safe hold called the bander's grip. And this bird's skull is completely ossified. I like smoothing its dew back in place. <laughs> so that means that this bird is what we would call an after hatch year. It was, uh, on this date, it is in it some year after its hatching year. 
And that's about as precise as we can be with this species. So this is a hermit thrush. Um, people have been capturing and banding birds for long enough now, and uh, we've figured out what size of band fits best for most of the species. Some species, it can be one of a couple different sizes, so we uh, use this tool, a leg gauge, to measure the width of the uh, tarsus, the, the unfeathered part of the bird's leg that we place the band of, over in a, uh, so it slides up and down easily. Um, these gaps in this gauge uh, are the same width as, uh, as the inside diameter of the bands. But this species, uh, we know, people have been capturing uh, many years, that the, the size that's designated 1B fits it best. And uh, if a bird bander's been working any length of time like I have, you get to memorize all that stuff. <laughs> and I've got the band sizes for nearly everything we capture here in my head, so I don't have to look it up. So what I did there was to open up the band so I can slip it over the leg, and we use these specially machined tools uh, that have these uh, gaps that are just exactly the width of the band when it's closed. This uh, prevents any over crimping of the band that might uh, injure the bird in any way. Um, if it, the band is placed open inside the pliers, slipped over the leg, when we crimp it shut, that is, squeeze the pliers shut, it's going to close the band without it over crimping or overlapping and, and getting too small. And that's a perfect fit on this bird. What we do, every bird we put a band on, is inspect how the band uh, closed to make sure there's a tight fit there, and that it slides and spins easily up and down the tarsus here. We know from people who have studied that this does not cause any harm to the bird at all. There's many species of birds that we've learned live many years. This species, I believe, the longevity record is 10 years and some odd months, and we learned that from a bird uh, wearing a band that long, so we knew that individual lived that long. Okay. Yep. Oh, you're showing off. This is easy. It's a hatchier male. That's easy to tell because it's got scattered magenta uh, all over its head, in the throat and around the head. The adult male will have uh, all of the head will be the bright magenta brighter than just a purple. Um, the, this is the only hummingbird species that's resident year-round here, the Anna's hummingbird. And uh, they have an interesting trait that we can use to uh, tell the age. Besides the plumage is uh, striations or grooves in the upper mandible, uh, the, the upper part of the bill. Uh, young birds, uh, the bill uh, grows very rapidly while it's in the nest, and that causes little ridges or striations. And they wear away with age, but this one still has some. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call it 20%. And then scattered uh, magenta throughout head. So that makes it a, a young male. A uh, female would not have it on the head at all. Mm -hmm. May have a scattered one or two in the throat, but that's it. And of course, it, uh, we don't ban the hummingbirds here in our project, 3.5. For the uh, amount of uh, returns that we would get, that is um, a, a returned bird that has a ban so that we could learn more about what habitat it's using, where it may have gone, how long it may have lived, um, it's very small. Uh, especially in light of all the, the extra work involved with this. So that's why we've decided not to do that. Also, there's the, uh, the factor of that they're a little more prone to getting stressed out from uh, the handling. So what we do is identify the species, record the date, time, and net capture, and figure out the age and sex and release them.